Guys, my name is Chris DeClerc. I'm a uh, irrigation specialist with Delta Plastics and uh, very proud to be here talking about pipe planter and talking about multiple inlet. Uh, we also have a, a grower named Brad Shivers. He's from Cleveland, Mississippi. And uh, I've work, been working with Brad for about five years now. He's going to speak on some benefits of how pipe planter and how multiple inlet has helped him uh, directly on the farm. Uh, we'll go into some new, uh, new benefits and some new features and uh, take some questions at the end of it. First off, just starting, anybody use computerized hole selection in the house, pipe planter or faucet? Okay. Okay, anybody use multiple inlet, polytubing on rice, alternate wetting and drying? Okay. So there's a new version of pipe planter. We'll go over it a little bit, uh, see some new features of it, and uh, I've got some webinar dates that'll be coming up, so if you want to get online and uh, get a little bit more educated, I'll show you ways to do that. So. In the United States uh, alone, polytubing use is uh, predominantly set uh, in the Delta. There's about four to five million acres where we sell polytubing, mainly in those five states in green. Our hub is uh, right there in Little Rock, and we do where we manufacture all our pipe, and then we recycle all of it in another part, another facility in Stuttgart, Arkansas. We also do uh, different ag plastics like greenhouse films and uh, uh, pond liners and things like that. The polytubing is definitely what keeps the lights on. Uh, we use it in multiple different ways, as many of you guys know, in levee irrigation with multiple or side inlet. Uh, furrow is the predominant way that's used on cotton corn uh, soybeans. Also use some uh, still polytubing uh, in a border irrigated fashion where we're just guiding water down, guiding water down a particular slope, kind of uh, putting out a big wave of water, if you will. With regard to furrow irrigation, what we're looking for, if I can get this video to play, I don't know how I'm going to be able to, unfortunately. Let's see if that works. There we go. Maybe. Yeah, so if you can see the water kind of running down each individual furrow, you may ask yourself, well, how do I, how do I water those point rows out right at the beginning and make sure that everything's watered out, uh, <coughs> watered out evenly? Well, you can only do that first and foremost and know what size polytubing to use if you're measuring your flow with a, uh, with a flow meter. Uh, after that, you want to get the elevation along the polytubing pad. And the, believe it or not, a lot of you guys may even already have that with your RTK machines or some self-guidance system that's, that's out there. So you can take that information, import it into pipe planner, um, directly from the tractor, it'll tell you that elevation value, it'll put it right there on the screen and then you can get a design plan from it. So again, the two pieces of real important data uh, that you need for pipe planter or the uh, water source, the gallon per minute flow, and then the elevation along the polytubing pad. So low cost equals big savings. That's exactly what uh, the pipe planter model does. This is a gentleman down in Bluff, <coughs> Mississippi. About a 90 acre field, he reduced uh, his pumping time by 12 hours, saved about 16 million gallons of groundwater. But the big pitch is that 2,800 bucks saving in propane uh, cost. And uh, Charles has recently put about 500, uh, 500 to 1,000 more acres on pipe planter over the years. And the new land that he's bought, if he has a question about what size holes to punch, he goes right to pipe planter every time, gets the flow rate, gets the elevation along the polytubing pad, or gets where he's going to be uh, uh, putting the levees in his field with regard to multiple inlet. He knows exactly what holes to punch. He manages a little bit over the year, and he reaps the benefits and uh, and money savings. Again, that's just from knowing what size holes to punch, uh, punch in the pipe. <coughs> so with multiple inlet rice irrigation, or side inlet rice irrigation, you can see on the left, that's where a piece of polytubing is going, and you just tweak the gates. Yeah, and this is your positions. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. do a pipe planter yes. in rice too? Yes, yes sir. It's all, every bit of this is the same program. And like I said, it's a free internet-based program. You get on pipeplanter.com. And you determine how many acres in each levy? It does it automatically. It does automatically. It's based on the map. That's right. You just draw your legs out. That's right. And don't have to be exact. You don't have to go and say, oh, an inch on the screen. But I was trying to do it first. You just draw your levees in there, and it just, it's all off head pressure and the amount of patties and the water distribution. Is this, all, is this all based off straight levees, or, or does it make a difference with contour levees? You can do contour, contour, contour also. As well. it's, it's, it really doesn't matter if it's contoured or straight. It's just all about the area of the individual pad. Yes, because it calculates how much area and how much water you need to cover that area. And so, and it's just kind of just some points. Uh, it's basically, like I said, Labor intensity once it's set up, it's minimal. Um, is that in there from what I did with the soybean? Is that field design in there? 
Um, so many. I don't think so. Not okay. the design itself. All right, let me give you this example this year. Like I said, we had an 80 this year split. We had soybeans on the north end, and we had rice, rex, straight levy on the on the uh, south end. And so the flow rate on the well is 350 gallons per minute. So they said we just put down a six horse submersible last week. So uh, and so 2015, we were doing. We had rice. We had leveled the fields. So we had rice on the north end again. We had a split again in 2015. We were having the water just conventional before we did multiple side inlet right at nine days straight, trying to keep with the sandy high sand ground, trying to keep the water to the rice at the level we wanted, trying to keep a two inch flood. Well, then we'll pull off and go. We had three sections of soybeans we were trying to water. We would get across about <coughs> right at, you know, 36 hours on the soybeans, and then we had to stop before we got to the last section to go back to the rice, start pumping the rice back up. So in the meantime, you're having to lift your boards, try to hold all the water you can, not lose any water. And so this year, side inlet, we went in there, and we're actually able, it was actually the water time actually cut down to about from nine days down to about five and a half, five, five and a half days, because the right water is going where you need it. And we're actually able to water the soybeans all the way through and almost had a day off of water back to the rice. And there was no moving the gates, no moving of anything. Because the water's going exactly where you want it. If you think like I said, like I was talking about earlier, when you're watering that field conventional, you know, you're pumping that water way up so it drops back down that level to the next one, pumping it way up. And so you're constantly chasing your tail and constantly losing water out of that field. The way this is, you make that lap around the field, and like literally once you get it down about second, third water, and that water, when you cut that well on, you'll have water, even amount of water going to eat for your spill almost at the same time like clockwork. And so you can schedule easier. Uh, you know, you can just, it, it's really a no-brainer because it really solves a lot of your problems, a lot of mysteries out there. It takes, a lot of, it takes all the guesswork out of it, and it's a lot better peace of mind knowing you know, the, what you're implementing, whether it's furrow, whether it's levy, you know, besides, you know, your efficiency alone is so much better. You but know. you're saying in 300 <coughs> gallons, 500 gallons, which is not very much, you got 100 rows. If you water 50 rows at a time, or if you water 100 rows at a time, well, 100 rows water the same amount as 50 rows? Because you're, you're, you're splitting your water up going down 100 rows. You talking about going every other row versus yeah, every row? If you double row, double pilot plant. Mm -hmm. First 50 rows you water, and then you go water other 50 rows. Versus watering the whole field with pilot pipe plant. How much more time? Because you, you don't have no volume of water running down in the middle. How much more time? <coughs> the same? Or well, less time? Well, it's, yeah, I mean, you could do the same thing with regard to the sets. You could also go try an every other furrow routine instead of running multiple sets out there. But Brad just chose to add to have it every middle, so he busted that field up into yeah. multiple sets. Now, he could have come back and told Pie Planner, hey, instead of having three sets, I want to try every other furrow and try just to get away with two sets on that particular field. So you can come back and tell the program that, and it'll pick the whole size based on okay. your decision. The first step in Pie Planner, when you get into a field, the first thing you do, you outline your field. It's a Google map. You can see, it will actually have your old rows on there when it took an image. Yep. And you can actually draw your map out, and it'll say, let's say you have 40 acres at this flow rate, it's going to take 37 hours to water the whole field if you did one line of poly pipe. Well, then you can tell it, let's say we want to do it in three sets. You break down three sets, it'll say, all right, each set's going to take nine to 10 hours of water. Well, then if you're like, well, I want to see if I can speed up, you can actually, it's a little button, you click every furrow or alternate furrow, and it'll go for, it'll almost cut that time in half. I thought you're doing every other road, but it depends on like yeah, buckshot ground, gumbo. The water's gonna seep across. You're gonna go every other furrow. You know if you're up, depending on you know we're on 38 inch beds. Some people are on 72s or what 76 whatever. So you can get away with it in different situations. So it is it's uh, like I said, it's gonna make your efficiency time. It's something we like for my y'all's labor force is anything like mine. They're you know. Very little, a few, far between. You're doing a lot on your own. I know we are. And uh, there's stuff that, you know, scheduling. Like you can go in, because if you're well time, you, you know, let's say you have this one field, North 50, we call it. And I know every section, it has good well, but it's a big field. It's almost a 60 acre field. And so all the sets are 18 hours. Well, if I know, if you share, let's say you're sharing a well with another field, 
and this field over has 12 hour and this field has 18 hours. Let's say it's 6 p.m. you're about to go home or you're wanting to, you have to go to a ball game or do something with your kids, whichever. You're like, well, so I can either start this run right here, it's gonna be 18 hours, I can either come out here at midnight and check it again, or I can go to this 12 hour set and run until 6 a.m. in the morning and check it in the morning. So you have options where you can literally, you know, you can go out of town, you have a farm manager, if you need to, and you can write a schedule of water time. They literally, it's like clockwork, like go this, go set one north, 8 a.m. on this day, and you can kind of write, you can literally write a schedule out once you get it down. It's like I said, very efficient, very easy, and you know, it's just really a peace of mind. So, I think that's it. I think a lot more. That's all right. Yeah, feel free to continue to ask more questions. So, we continue to continue to need to get this type of tool adopted. I think it's, it's, it's a great tool that saves money and saves water, along with soil moisture probes, along with surge valves, which you've heard a lot of. That's really the comp the package. Right, if you want to save a ton of money and save a lot of water inherently. Uh, pipe planter's totally free, but this is the acreage that we had uh, last year. There's also a faucet program that's out there that a lot of guys are still using, so I believe this, this, this acreage is actually more than that, uh, depending upon that, uh, that use. We have this thing called the H2O Initiative, which guys are asking about, will Delta Plastics do it for you for, for free? Well, the, the answer to that question is yes and no. Yes, I would love to be able to help you out whenever possible. And also, we're training guys out there to better help you through extension, through NRCS, consultants, whatnot are all out there. So we formed this consortium group and we're building a method to better educate the educators out there. So when you call at Delta Plastics, we can say, what parish are you in? What county are you in? Okay, there's a guy here who's highly proficient in pipe planner. His number's X. Give him a buzz. He's a consultant or he's an extension agent and he's there to help you out. Well, would you rather yep. be about 200 grow from you than 100? Well, are you going to buy? Are you going to buy those anyway? If you do the consulting work, no, you wouldn't buy it. If you were to do the, if you're going to do it for free, I'm going to do the pipe, the pipe planter yeah. for you. The, the rolls don't come. But I'm going to cut my rolls down. You're going to cut your rolls down? Mm -hmm. well, I thought that's that's what you were saying anyway. No, that, that's fine. If you want to, if you want to call me up with questions and you have issues and your particular extension agent can't do it, I can I can definitely help you out. So we're committed to con uh, conservation. This is the goal. Stakeholder support. We have a technical uh, leadership. We just want to provide good adoption and good results out there. And here's our collaborative uh, groups that are all out there that we formed the H2O initiative with. So everybody loves new technology, new features. We released a new version midstream during uh, when we had version two last year and it created a riot. Uh, we promise not to try to do that again right during the irrigation season this year. But uh, Brad was talking about automatically splitting up sets. So here's set one on your left. You see, you can barely see there, that it's going to water out in about 45 hours based on the size of the field, the flow rate, and a general soil type. Well, I want to split this into two sets. In the old version, you had to draw two sets. Now you just enter in exactly what time, how long you want to water that field, and it does it automatically for you. So you come back and you just draw a pipe and you're done with that. Your prescription is now for two sets instead of having to re, you know, redo everything and go back in and draw, uh, draw two fields. A lot of people in here, um, uh, when, when I asked earlier if you use pipe planter, you said you didn't, so you're not gonna necessarily know what the difference between version two and version three is. Well, that is a really, really cool, expensive new feature that's gonna save you a heck of a lot of time whenever you're processing multiple sets and you got 350 gallons a minute. Okay? Three hours of McDonald's Cafe. Three hours, Henry sits in McDonald's Cafe and hammers out plans for people in Arkansas. So if that's not a help, I don't know what is. There's set one and set two, both of which you're going to water in that 18 to 24 hour time frame. You're going to need a roll pipe. You're going to need a dummy roll pipe to get to that second set. But you've got elevation. It calculates the pressure down that dummy roll until it gets to that first furrow and tells you exactly what hole you need to punch. <coughs> Make sense? Has anybody got a scenario like this? We got a lot of this that happens in Arkansas where you got a lot of side slope and you put these barrels haphazardly underneath the polytubing to hold back pressure. You can do the same thing with a rope. You can do the same thing by necking it down to a smaller diameter pipe. The beauty of pipe planter now is, is that when you go into it and you have that situation, you draw the pipe along the bottom and you see where that black dot is, you're telling it to tie the pipe off in that situation. Sir? Tell them where the pipe is on there. Yeah, the blue line. Oh yeah, 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 sorry. You alluded to it, but the, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. You see where that, see where the water source is in the left-hand side, then you see that small little dot. 
there's a very slight blue line there, and I should have made that a little bit better, but the polytubing goes along the bottom side. It runs from west to east, and then the white line represents the south and north furrows, okay? So it's terminated at the black dot right there. So if you were to tell pipe planner, hey, I want to leave the pipe end open, push that little circle, it engages a completely different set of code, which it'll then tell you where to put a buildup. So on the left, <coughs> coming out as well as so I like for it too. But those are hole sizes, furrow counts, and then you can see in the far right column, you can see a buildup pipe. So it says, based on two foot of head pressure, you need a two foot buildup at 962 foot or 562 foot, another two foot buildup at roughly 1100 foot, and at the very end, you need a 1.8 foot buildup. Does that make sense to everybody? So you're going downhill and you need something to hold back the pressure. So if you've got a barrel and it's only 15 inches, you could put in the maximum head pressure column 1.1 foot and it'll choose a whole bunch of 1.1 foot uh, tall barrels. If you put two foot, then it's not going to choose as many because it's a higher buildup going down the, the side slope. Does that make sense? You've got to hold the pressure back uphill. It could be six foot, it could be seven foot of fall. But in the past, again, yeah, it's the same thing as choking it down, right? Sausaging up the pipe and throwing pressure back up uphill. You're going over the top of the berm and it's holding pressure back up. Pipe planner will now tell you all of that instead of you having to guess where it is and have an inefficient water flow, losing water, or wasting water and losing money. A very, very cool new feature. How do you yeah. feed the, the, the elevation data to, so that they can know where to do this? Actually? Yeah, yeah. so what you do is you go back. So right there at the very point, you see that button that says add elevation points underneath draw pipe? You simply just scroll down there and you click on the water source and you put your benchmark is 10. And then at the end of the field, your benchmark is negative four for a six foot fall and you're done. So you don't have to have the shots in between? No, no, it's, just no. it's really, it's really, I mean, for 20 years, as long as computerized hole selection has been out, or maybe even longer, all it really was in the very beginning was just getting the elevation at the water source, then at the end of the yeah. end of the field. I've even done, I've even taken shots all the way down <laughs> and put it in a right. spreadsheet and drawn a linear regression line and just took it off of, took it off of that. It's better than not doing. Yeah. I've tried it. I've had problems if I didn't from the beginning and the end. And in, in a permanent levy structure that we operate mm -hmm. under, typically in this area, back uh, west, uh, we have permanent levies. Gotcha. Zero grade for the most part in between levies. And we'll have a 12 to 18 inch drop. Between. Between. So what I found the best results is actually going in and putting elevations in front and behind they permanent levies? Yeah, permanent levies. Then it gave me the build and went over the big levies at two foot. Sometimes we'd have to shave it down when the levies under is alluded to to keep the head pressure. And on the next run, have that. It was the only way I was able to get it close. Did it, did it work out for you? It's working. We've got to visit some more. Okay. Okay. It's almost like a hybrid model. So I'm, I'm, you know, we're, we're pushing the end along. Yeah, it's very rare. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's the one. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm still working on the hunt. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, we have our priorities, the features with which we're trying to prioritize them, squish all into Pipe Planner and make every single field work. Well, we're working on the Southwest Mine. Gotcha. <laughs> so, so yeah, like I said, we got these priorities, right? There's a percentage of fields that water out of both sides of the pipe, right? But you might have 500 gallons a minute. Should you be punching holes on both sides of the pipe and watering 1,000 foot long sandy rows? Probably not. You probably need two runs of pipe, right? Water on both sides of it. So it's not a good decision to do that in the first place, unless you have really, really high flow. But that happens very, very, a very small percentage in Arkansas. And then it happens at a very large percentage all throughout the Delta. So is it a priority over making sure a set feature like that works? It's, it's, it's not right now. But I can help you directly with complicated fields or complicated issues. And the more we learn about the fields, the more we learn about how to get that in the bike lane. It's a farmer built tool. And they'll still be important. Are y'all going to still be importing topos into this to better use? Well, right now you can take the elevation off of the tractor by way of a CSD file, and you can dump that into it. Remember, pipe planner just needs to know in furrow irrigation the elevation along the polytubing pad. Oh. Only. Once the water comes out and hits the ground, there's a lot of anomalies there with regard to what type of soil that you so have. So what kind of topo are you talking about? You're talking about 
defining the perimeter of the field and the other. I'm just saying, I'm just talking about drawing the boundary of the field. So now we know where Linear run. Yeah. Linear run. Right underneath where the pipe is. That's what, that's what we need. Mean. We want to be able to dictate the hydraulics of what's going on inside of the poly tubing better. In order to track you're talking about, they have to be using RTK or something like something that. Something similar to that, yes, sir. Like a self guided uh, system. Just a regular. Like a GPS yeah, I don't. Yeah, in lieu of that, what you can do is at your head, you can shoot a regular transit. Yeah, you, you can transit, transit shot it, and that'll be your benchmark. Yeah, and then whatever you do, you can transit down yeah, to the end. Yeah, you can do every one of them. Yeah, you can do every one, or you can do front to end, and then you can there's a place to plug that in for that that drop. And then, and then everything will be fine. Yeah, if you're going across the top of the field and you're coming down with the polytubing and catch the point rows, how many points are you going to take? You're going to take one at the source, one here, and then one there probably. You know that this is probably fall, or probably uh, flat, going all the way here. But you know this has got compound slope because your field falls, right? Yeah, so the polytubing doesn't right fall here. because it's not, it's not graded. It's stair step because it's zero grades and stair steps. Yeah, so in his case, you'd have to go in and mark a spot and get a recording, right? And a GPS point. You basically take one mark a spot. Each, each, you cut, take each cut. cut. You get a reading on each yeah. cut between those. Yep. And then you could put that in Excel and dump it to a CSV and just dump it in. So you, that's need, where, a, that's you need a GPS position associated with it. You've got to have a GPS position. Okay. That's so I start doing that, it would be dumped. you got to lat. you got to have, <laughs> 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 gotta have a lat long and but, but You can do it in here. I think I was successful <coughs> last year. In between there, between your levees, you can go in and actually put a point in the program and say, look, this this location in this cut between levees is X. This location is B. And once you put that in, it picks it up. That's exactly right. Okay. That's exactly right. So don't you worry can about RTK and all that. You can do it manually yeah. on, on, on paper and then bring it in and transpose it back out. Listen, and, and, and the way that you're the way that you're collecting it versus going out and get extrapolating a lot of data out of the tractor, the way that you collect it manually, more than likely it's going to work 90% of the time. Again, the way we used to do it is just up front, the, the elevation of the water source and at the very, very end. All right, so we have a better streamlined page these these days. There used to be that we populated a bunch of designs. Now you just you can just go into Pipe Planner, you can just choose different holes in order to make it less laborious. We also have ways where you can split flow in Pipe Planner. So if you have a T coming out of this field, like so, this is a more close up view. That's an inline T where you're actually splitting the flow coming out of the riser, going both left and right. So if you don't proportion that flow based on the size and how much flow is going left and the right side, you don't really know what polytubing size to use and you don't know what holes to use. So now Pipe Planner does that for you. And it'll pick holes path one, pick holes path two. It might even say, hey, you need 12 inch on one side and 15 inch on one side. Save you a little bit of money and water the field out the right way. So this is how multiple inlet works. You choose levy, you draw in the levees just like Brad did. You can upload uh, the levees by way of the CSV, and then it calculates the size of those levees. So the first six are the same acres, probably going to use the same gate size. These up here are smaller acreage patties, so they're going to need less gates or less holes or close the gates down a little bit more. But you tell it the information that you need, it calculates everything for you. This is a multiple inlet or middle of the field, I'm sorry, side inlet installation. This is where you draw the pipe. And then again, gate openings here. This is position one, position two, there's a quarter of the way open, position three is half open, and position four is all the way open. But again, and uh, you know, I, I harp on what Dr. Henry says: is management is key. You got to go out there and tweak those gates a little bit. The, the first time, it's more than likely you're going to have to you're going to need to tweak it just a little bit before you move on. You can even go through the middle of the field, and it'll calculate out areas on both sides of the pipe. So there's a supply line coming from the water source. It enters the field at that riser, and then you've got gates on both sides of the pipe. Now that light Does that green, make sense? That light green line all the way around. Yes, sir. That's the, that's the boundary of the field. That's the you yes, put sir. that in there. You that's that's that right. You draw that in there, then okay. it accepts it and it turns green because it's active. That's the first step. Yeah. The very first step. Very important step. So, again, this, that's how you make it work. Learn about the system. Um, I implore everyone to, if you got your phone out, take a picture of this. This is times with which I'm going to be training people. Yeah, so these are March training events. There's other training events that are go about. Break out your phones. 
take a picture. You could be in your underwear at 9 a.m. for 30 minutes to learn how to run pipe lantern, right? Nobody's going to be looking over your shoulder. It won't take very long. You've got to email me at Pipe Planner Delta Plastics if you're going to join one of these, or I'm not going to know who you are. You just basically need a machine and an internet connection. You sit behind it, you watch my machine work the whole time. Okay? What's that? You got Tim's message. Yeah, you, got, you can't write me dirty notes, so I'm going to chat with me. And then the YouTube page that we have out, there's a, a ton of videos up there now that are under five minutes. Go type in Pipe Planner YouTube, it'll all be under that one page, and you can teach yourself how to run Pipe Planner just like you taught yourself how to install a ceiling fan. Do you record these webinars for me? I sure, I sure can. I, I will. Very good point. Thanks for reminding me. I'll record those. Questions, comments? Guys, contact your local extension agent, NRCS, <coughs> consultant. Call us, call Delta Plastics. Find out how you get more educated. It's a, it's a necessity. Thank you. Thank you.